Welcome to level three exponents. Let's get started. So if I asked you what four to the one half power is, your immediate inclination is to view this probably as like a multiplication problem and try to multiply it somehow or 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 add them or something. And and you always have to remind yourself this is not multiplication. I I know when I first learned it, I always was tempted to do something with multiplication. Well, something to the one half power might not be intuitive to you, but it actually turns out that this means the same thing as the square root of four. Or another way, what times itself is equal to four, and we know that the square root of four is two. It could actually be a positive two or a negative two, because we both we, we know that either of those numbers, when they're squared, could equal four. But for for the sake of this one, we'll assume it's always the positive square root. So four to the one half is equal to 2. Similarly, 9 to the 1 half, well, that would be 3. 16 to the 1 half, oh, whoops, 16 to the 1 half, I, my subconscious gave away the answer. 16 to the 1 half power is 4. 25 to the 1 half power is 5. I think that might make sense to you now. So what does it mean when something is to the one-third power? Well, if I say 8 to the one-third power, you might already catch on. In the one-half power, we said something times something is equal to 4. Well, in the one-third power, we have to say that something to the third power is equal to 8. And if you've been practicing your exponents, you know that 2 to the third power is equal to 8. So we know that 2. 8 to the 1 third is equal to 2. Similarly, 27 to the 1 third is equal to 3. And 64 to the 1 third is equal to 4. You might notice that I'm picking particular numbers like 8 and 27 and 64. That's because they have clean cube roots. And then, by the way, when something is to the 1 third power, that's the same thing as saying the cube root. I just use terminology without explaining it, which is very bad. So I just used 8 and 27 and 64 because when I raise them to the fractional exponents, they actually come out to be clean numbers. You could use a calculator and do something like 5 to the 1 third power, and you'll get some weird decimal. Let's do some more problems. So we know that um, 9 to the 1 half is equal to 3. Well, what do you think 9 to the 2 thirds is equal to? Well, it turns out that this is equivalent to 9 to the, oh, whoops, I actually didn't want to do 9 to the 2 thirds. What do you think 9 to the 3 halves is equivalent to? Well, this is the same thing as 9 to the 1 half power to the third power. And I'll do a whole presentation on exponent. Um, the actual uh, principles of exponents. But it, it actually turns out you can just multiply. When you have a, one exponent to another exponent, you can multiply the two, and that's where you get 3 halves. But 9 to the 1 half we know is 3. 3. And you're raising that to the third power. So that equals 27. I'm sure at this point I have confused you. Let's do more of these. So you know at this point that 16 to the 1 fourth power Think about what that is. That means that some number to the fourth power is 16. And if you've been practicing your level 1 exponents, you'll probably know that, well, e that equals 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, well, that equals 16. So we know that 16 to the 1 fourth is equal to 2. So what do you think 16 to the 2 fourths is equal to? Well, we already know from that last problem that that's the same thing as 16 to the 1 fourth squared, that's the 2 in both sides. And we know 16 to the 1 fourth is 2, so that equals 2 squared, and that equals 4. And it all works out because we know from fractions, another way to write the fraction 2 fourths is to write 1 half. So this is the same thing as 16 to the 1 half power. And 16 to the 1 half power, well, well that's just equal to 4. Now I'm going to mix it up real good and do some fraction, negative fractional exponents. So what if I were to told, tell you 16 to the negative 1 half power? 
Well, this might seem very daunting at first, but as we know with the negative exponents, level 3, immediately we just say, well, this is the same thing as 1 over 16, 1 over 16 to the positive 1 half. And that's the same thing as 1 to the 1 half over 16 to the 1 half. Well, the square root of 1 is easy. It's 1. And 16 to the 1 half is 4. So that wasn't too bad. It's a little daunting when you see a negative exponent, but immediately when you see that negative, just flip the 16 and then work it out like a regular fractional exponent problem. Let's do another one. 8 over 27 to the, let's say, negative 1 third. Immediately when we see that negative, we want to just flip it. So we'll say that equals 27 over 8 to the 1 third. And that equals 27 to the 1 third over 8 to the 1 third. And we know that 27 to the 1 third, well, that equals 3. And 8 to the 1 third, well, that equals 2. 2. So we've got 3 halves. So we've got tw 8 over 27 to the negative 1 third is 3 halves. This first problem probably looked very intimidating to you, but it only took us two steps to get there. And, and as you do more practice, it hopefully it'll, it'll seem more and more intuitive to you. Let me give you another problem. What's negative 8 to the negative third power? No, no, actually, I want to <laughs> let me change that. What's negative 8 to the negative 1 third power? And once again, at first this might confuse you, but when you see that negative in the exponent, we just take the reciprocal of the base so that we say that that is equal to negative 1 over 8, negative 1 over 8 to the 1 third power. And we say, well, that is equal to, we could write it as, we could write it as 1 over negative 8 to the 1 third. And we say, what number times itself three times is equal to negative 8? Well, we know from intuition there's no real uh, mechanical way to do this. Is, but we know that negative 2 times negative 2 is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So we know that this is equal to 1 over negative 2 or negative 1 half. So eight, negative 8 to the negative 1 third is equal to minus 1 half. Let's do another one, one more problem, just to thoroughly melt your brain. Let's say a 9 over 4 to the negative 3 over 2. Well, immediately we see that negative exponent. Let's flip the base. We get 4 over 9 to the 3 halves. Well, we know that that equals 4 over 9 to the 1 half, and then all of that to the third power. 4 over 9 to the 1 half, I think at this point you know that's the same thing as 4 to the 1 half, which is 2, over 9 to the 1 half, which is 3. And then we have to just raise everything to the third power. And that's the same thing as 2 to the third power, which is 8. That's an 8. <laughs> Sometimes the computer acts funny. Divided by 3 to the third power, well, that's 27. There we have 9 fourths. The negative 3 halves power is equal to 8 over 27. Now, hopefully, you can at least do these problems, and you probably don't have a good intuitive sense for uh, for exactly what a negative 3 half power is. And, and hopefully, I can I can cover that for you in, in future modules. But I think you're ready to try some of the level three exponent practice problems. Have fun.